Hello, namaste. It's Leanne Peters here from templeofbalance.com.au, Temple of Balance on Facebook and Temple of Balance on YouTube. And I'm here to share some guidance for Saturday and Sunday. That's Saturday the 9th and Sunday the 10th of February. So I'm coming to you live now from Tasmania, Australia. It is Saturday the 9th of February here at exactly 7.02 p.m. So, extra special welcome to my Temple of Balance patrons, my Pillar of Light family, and all of those of you who support my work through my website. Thanks so much for your support. If you're new to watching, welcome. Hello, Lindsay. Namaste. Uh, if you are new to watching, welcome. What I'm going to be doing is using my combined Speed of Light Oracle cards with my Animal Kingdom Oracle cards. And I'm looking for the best card for Saturday the 9th of February, the best card for Sunday the 10th of February, and then the best card for the theme for Saturday and Sunday. I'm not doing personal requests for guidance here today. This is general guidance for everyone. So I trust that you've been let here for a reason and I trust that something shared will be helpful and supportive for you. So just take on board what feels right, what resonates with you at the time and let the rest go. If it doesn't make sense, it doesn't matter. So I trust that our paths have crossed for a reason. So what I plan on doing is sharing the guidance for the weekend and then I'm going to hang around for five or ten minutes for a chit chat <laughs> if you want to hang around. Depends what you're up to. So I'll be here for a little bit. Get yourself comfy if you can stay and um, we'll see what comes up. Let's allow ourselves to be surprised and um, yeah, let's see. I don't I have no idea what's going to happen. So Saturday the 9th of February, let's see what comes up in the cards today or for Saturday if it's not quite Saturday for you yet. It wouldn't be far away though, I wouldn't think. So the best card for Saturday, I trust, will find its way to the top of the deck and it will be the most helpful for the majority of us. How do I know? Because that's my intention. So we're going to go with this card. It's the Chameleon. I don't think this card has come up before in my readings since I got my new deck. I don't think. It's card three, the Chameleon. It says, give it your full attention. So we've been encouraged on Saturday to really focus on something basically and avoid distractions. So there might be something that um, distracts, distracts us potentially on Saturday and we've been encouraged to keep our eye and our focus on what we're doing. So be careful too, I feel that let's be careful that we don't um, procrastinate too much on Saturday and if we have tasks and duties and chores and work that we need to do let's just recognize that we have them to do and let's um, take the action to do them so there might be a bit of procrastination around on Saturday not really feeling like getting things done but knowing they have to get done so if we stop the procrastination and we just get the task done we'll actually feel a lot better and save a lot of time so um, yeah that's about it for chameleon that I'm feeling is stay focused on Saturday. So whatever it is that you're doing, give it your fullest attention if that's something that you're inspired to do. So thank you. I trust that makes sense. Now let's look for the best card for Sunday the 10th of February. So Sunday the 10th and we'll see what that card wants to be. So I trust that you're feeling good and things are flowing well for you. And... Um, it's not too challenging at this time. So the best card for Sunday is this, another animal card. And it's the turtle. <laughs> it's card 45, the turtle. And the turtle's uh, keywords down here say slow and steady. So there is a bit of a slowness around, isn't there, on the weekend? I'm already feeling that on Saturday. So I'm not surprised that this overflows into Sunday. The turtle reminds us to just go slow and steady. Just keep persisting, keep being consistent. Let's be careful we're not desperately wanting the end result or wanting to reach the destination instantly. 
but let's just remember that it's okay to take our time and that we have all the time in the world to get to where we're going. So let's not get too much, uh, you know, caught up in the hair. I think of the hair and the tortoise and, and the hair wanting to get to the end as quickly as possible. Um, let's be a little bit more perhaps methodical or patient with ourselves and okay with the pace that we're moving over the weekend. So that's turtle. Some of us may feel like we want to retreat into our shell on Sunday, maybe for some healing or some rest. So there's a slow sort of feeling to the energy over this weekend, um, especially on Sunday. I mean, the chameleon doesn't move fast either. So there is this sort of slowness. Now, some of us might feel like we're dragging our feet at times, but we might, uh, you know, if we can find um, a sense of acceptance and being okay with the slowness and the steadiness, and the steadiness, you know, sometimes that steady pace is slower than other times. If we can find acceptance with that, then we might find, um, we might quite enjoy this weekend and the the rest or the tying up loose ends and the opportunities that we can create in that sort of slow steadiness. So now I'm looking for the best card for the theme for a Saturday and Sunday. So the theme card will help us bring these days together and help us see the bigger picture for Saturday and Sunday. So yes, I'm not doing personal requests for guidance here today. Thank you uh, for letting people know. This is general guidance for everyone. So Saturday and Sunday, we'll go with this here. It's a Speed of Light Oracle card and it's this. It's the Dolphins and it's a featured card. So it has further instructions here, which we're going to follow. It says, breathe deeply and choose a random card. And we'll go with this. It's the Unicorn. Okay, these two cards have come up together for a reason for our theme. And what I'm going to do is look at them separately and then we're going to look at their relationship together. So just a reminder, if you don't like the video, perhaps you can go and do something that you love. Um, just like anything, if there's something that we don't like, if we don't like a certain sport or a certain conversation, we hopefully have a choice to go and actually do something we love rather than hang about in something that we don't like. So if you don't like this, if this doesn't resonate, if this is not up your alley, if you're not into this sort of stuff, that's perfectly fine. Just turn it off and go and find something that you love to do. That helps all of us. It doesn't generate their negativity in a space that we're trying to, that you know, that some of us like to be in. So have a great day. So this is the first card in the themes for uh, Saturday and Sunday. It's uh, card 46 called Sensuality. And the key words down here say love, breath, relationship and passion. So this is really about breathing life back into ourselves again. Especially if we've been feeling deflated or flat or like we've been dragging our feet. So on a personal level and individual level, this is very much about looking over the weekend how we can revive ourselves. How can we reinflate and bring air and life force back into our body? back into ourselves again so we feel excited and motivated to get into our life or just get through our days. On a couple's level, on a relationship level, this is about reviving a new sense of depth, of sensuality, of connection between us and those that we care for um, and in our life, reviving our life. What can we do over this slow and steady pacing of this weekend? What can we do with this energy to help um, revive ourselves. Maybe we need the slow and steady pace this weekend or s the pace that we might have at times to recharge, to catch our breath again. So that's what feels to be important this weekend with the slow and steady energy. There is opportunity for us to now revive. So instead of sitting around complaining because we've only got two days off this week and we've been so busy or one day or whatever, Let's instead use these moments, these valuable moments to revive and recharge ourselves, ready for the week to come or ready for what might be coming up next. Now also um, for the theme is the Unicorn, card 50, 
and it says down here psychic gifts spiritual intuition and trust so this is sort of our spiritual card of the deck really and it talks about our spiritual interests our spiritual gifts our spiritual um, devotions or things that we like to do spiritually whatever that might be for us as individuals you know once upon a time and perhaps for you it still is it used to perhaps be going to church so for some of us we've sort of We've been finding our own way of connecting um, spiritually. For some of us, it may be stepping into nature, maybe getting out our oracle cards or doing a meditation or something that we find um, nourishing for us on a spiritual level. On another level too, this card is bringing emphasis to the third eye chakra here. And the third eye chakra is very much about trust. And we've been encouraged to really trust that everything's working out, trust in the decisions that we make, trust in our intuition as we um, go forward. Remember I said in the last video that um, we're, change isn't coming, change is already here. So we've put our blindfolds on, we're walking into the unknown. And when we do that, we have to trust. We have to be able to trust that our feet are going to land on solid ground. We can't get too far ahead of ourselves. We have to stay focused on the here and now and what feels right in the moments and trust in those steps and trust in that movement and the direction that we're going. So spiritual connection and also trust with this card. And when we look at these together, we're being, well, perhaps it's our spiritual interests that are going to help revive us. Maybe yes. And, and to trust that for some of us. So our spiritual interests, the things that we're, because the energy is slow and steady, we might have time to run a meditation, um, to listen to one and go on a meditation journey. We may have time to step out into nature and go on a healing walk. We may have time to get out our oracle cards, do a reading for ourselves, write in our journal, we'll do a tea leaf reading for ourselves, that's always fun. And using that spiritual connection or that spiritual reconnection to help us revive and bring our life back into ourselves again and we can trust that so that we don't need to seek confirmation we can trust what spirit the spiritual connections and the spiritual messages that we are personally receiving because they feel right for us but very much focused around our own revival bringing life and breath and love back into ourselves again so you know it's up to us we could sit on the couch with a packet of chips and watch movies all weekend long and enjoy that slow and steady pace. We could also work with that energy and find and make time to devote to our spiritual practices that we've been wanting to do lately. We may have been saying it, we may have been thinking it all week. Oh, I really just want to do a meditation, I want to get my cards out. So if we've been saying it and thinking about it, let's make time for it this weekend. So this can all be ignored if we're just going to sit back and not um, be proactive. So let's be proactive. Let's breathe life back into ourselves, into our life, into our, our relationships again. Um, and maybe the key to that is our spiritual devotions and spiritual practices and trusting in that more. Because the more we spend time meditating and um, doing whatever our spiritual interests are, the more we're going to trust in our intuition and really make that a, an important part of our day. Rebecca asks, what? <laughs> Hold on, Rebecca. Rebecca says, how to do a meditation with the cards, please? Um, I don't... Um, <laughs> you floored me, Rebecca. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> where do I start with that one? I guess I was kind of meaning them separately. <laughs> but um, with the animal cards, uh, you could pull an animal card and perhaps um, go on a meditation with an animal. Uh, if there's something important in cards that you pull like these, then perhaps meditate on it. And I'd definitely meditate with my healing energy cards. Um, I don't know about the speed of light that much. What I would probably do is um, work with them in conjunction a little bit 
and maybe pull some cards like I've been doing the intimacy spread that I shared on my website um, last week I've been do- doing that every day just to check in and see where the energy is going it's very interesting uh, and when I pull those four cards and connect with them um, right in my journal then I grab the cards and I put them on my heart and I do a meditation not with the cards I just feel the cards there and then I go on a meditation and um, do some healing or whatever around that um, but just basically trust your intuition with that, Rebecca. <laughs> so I trust it makes sense. But anyway, that's our guidance uh, for the theme for this weekend. Dorte, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, asks, what is the name of the cards that you're using? Oh, so these are my Speed of Light Oracle cards. And then they've been combined with my Animal ones, which uh, came up before and these my new animal kingdom oracle cards so that's what i've used today (laughs) thanks for connecting i trust that guidance makes sense i'm going to hang around for a little bit if you want to have a chat and say hello so i've used my combined speed of light oracle cards with my animal kingdom to create a 110 card deck you can use the decks together you can use them separately and you can learn more about them on my website if you're inspired to at templeofbalance.com.au if you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up button <laughs> please show us some love please comment or share if you're inspired to and if you want to connect more privately then please just send us a message through our website um If you want to learn more about me and my work, please visit templeofbalance.com.au. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, What I'm going to do now is play the singing bell and then I'm just going to hang out for five or ten minutes. So if you have a question, I'm not doing readings, but if you have a question that you'd like to ask or any topic you'd like to, uh, my opinion on, (laughs) I'm happy to give it if I have one. Uh, (laughs) So let's just use the singing bell for a moment. If you want to hang around, if you don't, then thanks for watching and have a great weekend and I'll see you soon. So this is, um, you can catch the replay if you joined partway through Annette, it's not a problem. The replay will be available when I finish this streaming. So this is a Tibetan singing bell and I've taken the ringer out and I'm holding it this way. I'm just going to play this for a few moments. So take some really nice big breaths and just let the sound of the bell fill you up. So you can imagine breathing it in, maybe imagine breathing in the love and the energy of the bell and start that reviving energy, um, like what the sensuality, the dolphins card was talking about. So nice, big breath. Listen, breathe, open, receive. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining me. So I'm going to hang around for a little bit. I'm going to say hello. So if you have anything that you want to say or ask, except I'm not doing readings, um, then please now is your time to put a comment up if you're watching live. (laughs) You'll know if you're watching live because it will have a red live button somewhere there. Hello Benita. Benita says thank you. It was really lovely to connect while you were live. Definitely going to take advantage of the quiet time for me today. Love the bell too. Thanks Benita. Have a great weekend. Kismet says do you make the ring you are wearing? Did I make the ring I'm wearing? No I didn't. This is from that secret wood place that you've probably seen uh, online. It's made from wood and it's the Aurora ring so it's like a whole little world in there mountains with snow I don't know if you can see it and the aurora so 
that's my wedding ring. It's on my left hand, even though it looks like the right. So um, Corey's got one the same, and they're just beautiful to wear. I love it. So um, we've had a few different wedding rings because I didn't want to spend a fortune on stupid well, excuse me if you don't think they're not appropriate but I don't like um, personally like like the golden traditional wedding rings so we had originally just bought a couple of really cheap silver cel um, Celtic patterned ones when we we're in New Zealand uh, years ago just really cheap and then Corey lost his <laughs> so then we got another one because you know I see people lose wedding rings and they get so stressed out and um a lot of weight seems to be put on wedding rings, which I didn't personally like. So we just went for rings and we're going to let our rings evolve. So as um, we lose one or as our connection changes or shifts or moves deeper, then we're going to find a special ring um, that sort of matches our growing relationship rather than a, a one that we feel bound to for the rest of our life if that makes sense that's just me <laughs> I've got a funny way with some things so that's just me uh, hi Cosmo Cosmo says my six-year-old twin boys are loving the bell oh that's great hello boys uh, hi David thank you thanks Rebecca Ashley says, how often do you come on live, please? This is the first time I've seen you live. Well, welcome. Um, I, I'm, I stream live several times a week, um, usually every two or three days, sometimes more often if I have time and I'm inspired to, sometimes less often if I'm busy, um, but at least a few times a week. So I have no set time. It's just very much when I feel like I want to be here when I have the time that matches. So maybe if you um, follow my videos or you can subscribe or something and you might get a notification when I go live next time or you can keep an eye out in the videos. But thank you very much, Ashley, and welcome. Anita says, beautiful ring, love the colour. Thank you. Thanks, Kismet. Hi, Ange. Thank you. Ange says, thank you for my personal message today. It was perfect. Thanks, Ange. Yeah, it was really interesting and very specific. And just talking about the Patreon message. Thanks, Ange. Kismet says, I love that line of thinking with the wedding rings. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, Laura. Laura says, fab reading and enjoyed the bell. Namaste. Thank you. Tira, I trust I've pronounced your name correctly. Tira says, I'm a Capricorn. What are you? I'm a Taurus. We're both Earth signs. What star sign are you? Do we have many Taurians here or Capricorns? Or oh, what's your star sign? Uh, Anita says, my husband and I don't wear rings. We know we are married. And I love that too. Very good. Thanks, Anita. Thanks, In Ingella. I trust I pronounced your name correctly. Simona says, hi, Leanne. How can I recover trust if it was broken? That's interesting. I, I always find trust really interesting, especially when it's connected with people. Um, I don't, personally, I don't think trust much around other people. I mean, um, there's, I guess there's certain people I know in my life, certain family members, certain people from my past that I may not uh, feel a sense of trust with. I just cut ties with them. If I don't feel a sense of trust, I, um, it, it's sort of an interesting topic because I don't think about how, whether I trust people much or not. Uh, when I think about trust and really uh, working on trust, it's more about how I'm trusting in myself or not trusting in myself. Am I trusting in the decisions that I make? Am I trusting in where my life's going? So I look at trust underneath that surface. So maybe if you're dealing with trust issues with another person, um, I know that I can't associate with anyone who I don't feel um, I'm able to trust. That's why it's not an issue for me for the most part because as soon as their trust is violated, they're, they're out of my life and I then am developing my own ability to trust myself. So what I would perhaps suggest, Simona, is to look at... Um, how much you're trusting in yourself, how much you believe in yourself, how much you're trusting in your intuition, the decisions you make in your life. Uh, if you've been hurt 
and you're carrying hurt or issues because of some violation of trust, I would also perhaps be looking at how you can let that go and definitely how you might be able to close doors or close a connection if there is an issue there. Because I don't know if you have a trust issue with someone and someone's violated that, I don't know if it can ever, in my opinion, be repaired where it wouldn't always be an underlying issue on, on some level. Um, so if my personality is I'd have to cut ties and I'd look at how can I trust myself more. Because all those external things, those relationships and whether we trust someone or not or whether someone supports us or not is all external. So all that stuff we can turn inward and uh, look at how we can deepen our trust with ourselves. So that's where I would go. But if you're still feeling wounded, then it might be something to look at clearing the issues around first and then look at, okay, how can I learn more about trust so that it's stronger for me and it's not so tied in with other people. That's just my thoughts and just see how you feel with that and if it makes sense or resonates. Hello, Sally. Sally says, I think that's a beautiful way to go with the love of a relationship. It comes with the heart. Yes, I agree. Thanks, Sally. Hello, Julie from England. Annette's a Scorpio. Uh, Rebecca's on the cusp of Aries and Pisces. Hilma's a Taurus. Hi, Samantha. Kismet's a Scorpio. I really attract Scorpios. I have a lot of Scorpios around me and have my whole life. Hi, Juliet's a Virgo. Uh, Anita's a Capricorn. Tanya's a Taurus. Hi, Melissa. Cosmo says, my twin boys have a big smile now and they are amazed that you are saying hi all the way from Australia to the UK. How awesome. Uh, Lenique is a Pisces, I think. Christine says, can you make good money going live on Facebook? I would like to try. You don't make any money going live on Facebook. So if that's the reason you want to do it, no. <laughs> Sue's a Taurus. Um, Melissa's going to come back and watch the replay. Rose is a Virgo. Thank you. Sally says, love your explanation of trust. Thank you. Thank you. Cosmo says, mistrust with no reason can damage a relationship. Definitely. I mean, yeah, it ruins it really, doesn't it? Thank you. Joe is a Scorpio. And Melinda's an Aries, so is Christine, and Anita is a Leo. Tira says, I'm a Native American Indian from Montana, and I'm glad to hear from all of you. Well, welcome, and thank you for coming. Courtney's an Aquarius. So thanks, everyone, for stopping by today. Thank you. <laughs> Angie says, oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> Angie says, um, we use your three sets of cards every day. They are beautiful. Thank you for your great work. Thanks, Angie. I'm glad you like them. Alana's a Leo and Anne-Marie is a Virgo. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. Have a fantastic weekend. And um, I trust that you find ease and peace in slow and steady movement. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to accept, but, you know, this is what happens. We sometimes have these slow, slower times and it's okay. So just let's... Uh, find our flow, our alignment with those as best as we can with the movement and whatever our weekend wants to be. So have fun, enjoy and I look forward to connecting with you again on Monday most likely. I've got the retreat coming up on Friday so I've got a super busy week preparing for that so um, I will be about. Joshua's a Virgo I see. I actually don't know many Virgos. It's funny isn't it how we sort of attract or yeah, well, I guess it is a tract. Um, the same types of people and the same same people uh, people with the same types of star signs. Like I attract a lot of Scorpios and I attract a lot of Taurians. Um, have and Pisces. I have a lot of those sorts of people around me. Um, and there's some that I just don't really know any of, like Virgo. So it's quite interesting. So thanks so much. I will chat with you again soon. Have a great rest of your um, day and weekend and send you lots of love from my heart to yours. Thank you and namaste.